Available in 2011 to 2014 Mustangs, Ford's first-generation Coyote engine is a stout mill that produces well over 400 horsepower right off the showroom floor. But every engine has a weak link. For the Gen 1 Coyote, the first part to cry uncle is the connecting rods. The factory-centered metal rods are more than up to the task at factory power levels, but once the dyno needle passes 600 horsepower, the rods are on borrowed time. So the Coyote's factory powdered metal rods and cast pistons were replaced with these forged gems from Manly and Molly. Lessons Molly learned while winning races like the 24 Hours of Le Mans are showcased in Molly's forged Power Pack Plus 2618 alloy extreme duty pistons. We started by filing the piston rings to get the gap we needed. With boost in mind, we gapped the top rings at 22 thousandths and the second rings to 23 thousandths and confirmed the oil ring rails had at least 15 thousandths of gap. We borrowed a buddy's trick ring filer to hasten the job, but fancy tools aren't necessary. We used a ring filer stone to deburr the edges of the rings. Here's a tip, always file the edges inward, away from the cylinder walls. We measured the ring gaps with the rings positioned one inch below the deck. We used a piston to make sure that they were square in the bore. We recorded our measurements on a spreadsheet for future reference. Ford Performance Parts makes rebuilding a Coyote engine easy with their block hardware kit. Besides new torque to yield main cap bolts, the kit includes all the little parts like dowel pins and plugs you don't realize you need until they're missing. We installed new piston cooling jets included with the Ford Performance Parts block hardware kit and torqued the bolts to 89 inch pounds plus 45 degrees. Clevite offers main bearings for Coyotes with standard and extra clearance options. We chose the latter as it adds one thousandths of bearing clearance to give our crank a thicker oil cushion in this supercharged application. With the bearings in place, we laid the crankshaft in position. We used plastic gauge on each bearing to verify bearing clearance met our two to two and a half thousandths target. After using mineral spirits to clean off the plastic gauge residue, we lubricated the bearings with assembly grease. The thrust bearing on Coyote engines is a separate piece positioned at the rear of the fifth cap. We placed the new torque to yield main cap bolts into position with the oil pump pickup mounting stud on the inner left side of the fourth main cap. The main cap torque procedure can be a little complex so we use this guide to make sure we did it right. All 20 vertical cap bolts are first torqued to 177 pound inches. The outer bolts are then torqued to 30 pound feet and the inner bolts to 48 pound-feet. Then all the bolts are tightened to an additional 90 degrees. The main cross cap bolts are also tightened in stages with the last being 60 degrees. To make installing the piston pin wire locks easier, we devised a tool from a bolt and a roll pin. Using our tool and part of a binder clip, we held the wrist pin in position and swirled the lock into its groove. Next, we installed the oil ring assembly on the pistons. The top and second rings have a mark on them indicating which side faces up. We lubricated them with oil and rotated them into the grooves on the Molly Power Pack pistons. To minimize blow-by and keep oil out of the combustion chamber, the ring gaps must be oriented like this diagram. We used a pick to rotate the rings and get the gaps in the right orientations around the pistons. Next up, we clean the cylinders with brake cleaner, then wipe them down with automatic transmission fluid to lubricate the rings and help them seat quickly against the cylinder sleeves walls on initial startup. We used a tapered ring compressor sized specifically for a 3.640 inch bore to install the rod and piston assemblies in each hole.
Manley specifies the rods must have between 10 and 20 thousandths of side clearance, so we verified that with feeler gauges. Using Clevite's extra clearance rod bearings, we verified that our connecting rod clearance fell within our 2.5 to 3 thousandths target using plastic gauge. Our clearances gave us the green light to assemble the rods for good. We lubricated the ARP2000 rod bolts on the Manley rods with engine oil and torqued the connecting rods per Manley's specs. Boost pressure loads the back of the valves and requires more spring pressure to keep the valve train under control, especially at high RPM. CompCams offers a complete high lift valve spring kit for Coyote engines. It includes new springs, retainers, seats, and seals. Compared to the factory springs on the left, the comp cam springs on the right increase spring pressure and accommodate up to 550 lift. 32 valves means there are a lot of valve springs to swap. We use this trick valve spring compression tool to make quicker work of removing the factory valve springs and installing the comp cam's high lift springs. It's set up to change four springs at a time without removing the tool. The comp valve spring kit also includes new seals and spring seats, so we removed the originals. With the factory valve springs removed, we used the opportunity to clean and lap the valves. A bit of duct tape helped the lapping tool cup grip the small coyote valves. Then we used the installation tool to install the comp cams springs. A pick and a little grease helps hold the locks in place during assembly. We used Ford Performance Parts Boss 302R head changing kit to make sure our heads were sealed with the best gaskets and factory spec hardware. Our machine shop subsequently encouraged us to use head studs for this boosted build, so we didn't use the included head bolts. We installed the ARP head studs finger tight and slid the multi-layer head gaskets from Ford Performance Parts in place. We carefully placed the heads over the studs and onto the block. We torqued the head studs to specs specified by ARP. This is the new 2020 GT500 oil pan and pump kit from Ford Performance Parts. It's a no-brainer for any high-performance Coyote engine build. It includes the 2020 GT500's Trick cast oil pan featuring trap doors to keep the sump covered during high G loads, a GT500 oil pump, which pumps a higher volume than the GT pump, and a high flow pickup tube, new windage tray and gasket, and all the hardware you need. A popular upgrade when building a Coyote engine is billet oil pump gears, such as these gears from Boundary Racing Pumps. What breaks the factory gears is debatable, but ultimately, a billet set of gears is just cheap insurance. These are Boundary's Super Trick black gears for our 2020 GT500 oil pump. They feature a unique ported design treated with martinware and cold finish surface finishes. Boundary claims the ported design reduces cavitation, improves flow, lowers pumping losses, and heats the oil less. The surface treatment greatly reduces gear wear to boot. We installed the Boundary Black Billet Oil Pump gears in the GT500 oil pump. Note that the ported side faces the backing plate of the pump. We applied a little bit of engine oil on the gears and contact surfaces in the housing. After applying a dab of red thread locking compound, we torqued the backing plate fasteners to 86 pound inches. With the GT500 oil pump reassembled, we slipped it over the snout of the crankshaft and torqued all the oil pump fasteners to spec. Let's move on to the valve train. Move the crankshaft so the keyway is at the 9 o'clock position. We installed the lash adjusters, 
followers, and camshafts. With the camshaft data labels pointing up, we use the shop manual to install the camshaft caps and torque them properly. To improve timing chain durability at high RPM, we chose Ford Performance Parts Boss 302 Timing Chain Tensioner Set. Ford says these are also used in the 2013 Mustang Cobra Jet engine program. That's good enough for us. Speaking of timing chains, CompCams offers their high-tech timing chains for Coyote engines. They're a good upgrade for modified engines, and besides, our factory chains had 70,000 miles on them anyway. Rather than use the factory sprocket on the left, we opted for Boundary's billet timing chain sprocket on the right. We replaced the secondary timing chain tensioners with the Boss 302 units from Ford Performance Parts. Here's how to set up the chains. Install the secondary timing chains on the VCT cam sprockets so that the marks on the exhaust sprockets align with the single colored links shown on the left and the marks with the intake sprockets are between the two colored links shown on the right. Install the VCT assemblies on the camshafts. Use a wrench to hold the flats of each camshaft and torque the bolts to 133 pound inches plus 90 degrees. Use new bolts as the original bolts are torqued to yield. Install the crankshaft sprocket. Loop one of the primary chains over the driver's side exhaust sprocket and align the colored link with the mark. Wrap the driver's side chain around the back teeth of the crankshaft sprocket so that the colored link aligns with the mark as well. Install the driver's side chain guides and tensioner. Note that we use the Boss 302 primary tensioner. Once we tighten the bolts to 89 pound inches, we pulled the pin to extend the tension plunger. Now turn the crankshaft keyway so it's in the 12 o'clock position. Install the passenger side camshafts so the data labels are roughly parallel to the deck, which is about a 45 degree angle. Install the secondary chain and VCT assemblies. Use a wrench to turn the exhaust camshaft slightly if necessary to fully seat the VCT actuators. Wrap the passenger side primary chain around the exhaust sprocket so that the mark aligns with the dark colored link on the chain. Wrap the passenger side primary chain around the crankshaft sprocket so the mark aligns with the dark colored link on the chain. Check that both the driver's and passenger side primary chain's colored links align with the mark on the sprocket. Double check all the marks and then install the passenger side guides, primary tensioner, and then pull the tensioner pin. The rear main seal on Coyote engines is housed within a bolt-on plate. We used sealant and torqued the plate to spec. Compared to the factory oil pickup tube on top, the GT500 oil pickup tube on the bottom features a larger diameter tubing and smoother bends. Even the pickup cone on the screen is larger. Ford really thought of everything with the GT500 oil pan kit. We torqued the pickup tube spacer to 18 pound feet. Using a little sealant at the rear main seal interface, we installed the oil pan windage tray gasket. Then we installed the GT500 pickup tube and torqued the fasteners to spec. We used the supplied fasteners and torqued them to the factory specs to secure the GT500 oil pan to this first generation Coyote engine. Ford Performance Parts really has all the little things you need to freshen up your Coyote build. The oil pump installation kit includes all the typical seals and gaskets needed on the bottom and front end of the motor. 
Even though the Coyote engine is sealed with rubber gaskets, a bit of sealant is required at the joints to prevent leaks. We love Permatex's The Right Stuff in the Easy Cheese Style can. It's easy to apply and sets up more quickly than other sealants. We used a shop vanual for the front cover torque sequences and specs. Finally, we applied some sealant at the cover to head joint and installed the valve covers. The bolts are torqued to 89 pound inches. We used a long reach harmonic balancer installation tool to install the damper. While it's tempting, do not use the factory damper bolt to install the harmonic damper. Using the factory bolt as an install tool is a great way to strip the threads in the end of the crankshaft and ruin your build. The oil level sensor on the GT500 oil pan is on the opposite side of the pan, so we extended the sensor's harness and routed it around the front of the sump. This Coyote engine is all dressed and ready for a boost party.